the plan of attack and the instructions and get myself familiarized with it before I commit uh, assembly. So right here you get your, to give you enough rigging line right here, wire right here, and let's we'll see like how it's kind of good he's got in here. Okay guys, we're going to take out this big hull. The ref, Blue Jacket always, always uh, wraps her holes up in butcher paper. I took it out earlier today just to, just to, just to, just to take around with it a little bit and see, uh, get the, the feel of the hull. That's how big it is guys, it's big. It's 36 inches long, it's one yard long. A little less than a meter. And the only thing you gotta do is these knucks right here. They got a machine that holds this block of wood at the end right here. And they got a duplicated machine. And the guy has a master hull. As he feels the contour of the hull, he's making this hull right here. You got your knucks at the end. These got to be trimmed out. Nice and round. And it's always a good idea, guys, on the plants. I haven't got the plans that I haven't looked at them yet. And so we're all gonna look at them together as an experience. I'm gonna start making hull station lines on here. And we can get models like this, full hull models. Just like I did with my USS Ward, my Blue Jacket USS Ward, also my Liberty ship, my Victory ship, always mark a center line. That center line is very essential to have. That's gonna be your guideline for everything. Make sure everything's on center. Not that center line is, no matter how keen your eyesight is, if you get off the, and the hair is an ant's ass, it's going to throw everything else off. And you, view, you stand back a couple of paces and view the model head on, you'll see something cockeyed on it. It's not right. So what you got to do is always make, your, make, always make your center lines on here. Draw your center line on there, and you make your whole station lines across here. Because you're dealing with, it's almost like a plan. That's how, that's how you get everything all squared up. And so it's not very much shaping this thing up, guys. You know, it's uh, it's one eighth scale, and she's 36 inches long. She's just about three inches short of my USS board. And this is going to be a very, very interesting modeling subject, to say the least. And I'm going to be the first guy in the world to build this thing, YouTube-wise. And I've seen this thing built up plenty of times. And uh, so what I can see is that it's a very, very impressive kit. And it has, it has so much detail in it. You I mean, it just, uh, it's just as a you. You look at it very carefully how it, how it was built. And all the poor people that died on thing. I think it, it was, she took off, I think there was 180 people that were aborted. And only 30 people were eventually recovered because they washed up on the beaches. Okay, guys, we're going to put the hull down here. Next to the wood parts down below. And we got, the, and we got something real good we're going to look at. Right here is big. This is probably 12 inches by 24 inches. This is where all the photo etches at. And I need to take this box off here so I can be able to uh, Laying us on this table over here, we can look at this together because I haven't looked at it yet. And I'll show you guys exactly what kind of photo wet set is on this here kit. Okay. So 
cut all the way. Excuse my back, guys. Okay guys. This is all foot of which brass right here. These are where your paddle wheels go on. You got all your railings right there. All precision made railings. Oh my god, yes, they got the they get the built-in shrouds on already. So I don't have to worry about that material. That answers my question. That's it. That's all it is. The sail sheet. And right here's your walking beam right here. Got your walking beam. And you got your plaque over here. Here we go guys. I showed you the wrong side. There is right there. See all the detail right there, this fellas. There's a lot of detail right there. You got the name here, the Portland on here. You can put that on your baseboard and get done. And uh, these are your paddle wheels. This fits outside of your paddle box. This fits on your your paddles. Fit right here as they turn. Axle goes through there. These are very. This is pretty pretty thick uh, photo wedge. And it's got to be very exercised with care and caution. You can see the railings right there, fellas. Beautiful looking railings. I'll get the built-in shrouds there. We'll get a little closer so you can see a little better. See this. The high fidelity of detail. That real set is gorgeous. Whole kit is gorgeous. Man. Unbelievable. I can see why it's so expensive. Okay, we'll back out a little more, guys, so I can put this back where it's at. We'll hit the plans next. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this at the bottom of the box where it will not be harmed. And uh, we're going to take a look at the plants. So like I said guys, this is going to be, this is going to be a, this is going to be a two-part video here. Back off with the uh, camera a little bit, getting too carried away here. Okay, we need to put this in the bottom of the box. That way it looks nice and flat. If any weight's going to be on it, it's not going to hurt it. Okay. Right here are the plans. Oh, God. <clears throat> I wish I had some more room here. Get back on that guy, just get an idea how big this thing really is. Well, that's that's uh, the profile. This thing comes in uh, two shapes. I think two shapes. No, three shapes. Three shapes of plans. This plan here, I believe, is the is the profile sheet. It shows the uh, the vessel itself and um, the construction of it and uh, the details 
<laughs> I'm sorry guys, I can't show a, bit, a good view of this in this here camera right here. But I think you get a good idea. And uh, this set of furniture goes here. And uh, it's like another profile view. Boy, guys, I tell you, I'm not very good here showing these plants here. They're too, too darn big. But I think you get the understanding. And, uh, that is a profile shear plan right there. This thing is big. Maybe I can give you a better shot of it now. It's big, guys. So you're too sure. So wait a second now. That was the profile side I showed you guys. That that side right there was the uh, deck plans. The last sheet right here is the walking beam plan. Shows you the construction of the walking beam right here. All the scale. And here's all the... This is a hull of your ship right here. The sponsons. How the sponsons are made right here. And uh, right here is the... Uh, The placement, these are all deck lines, hole lines right here. If you ever want to make one from scratch, that's one thing good about blue jacket plants. They're good working plants. They always give you hole stations, profile, everything. You can build this model uh, bread and butter construction or by using a little lats of wood. <clears throat> so that's miscellaneous details, hole lines. Along with that nice detailed booklet and these instructions right here, it'll aid me real fine in building a replica of the late great steamship SS Portland. That was a victim, that fell victim of the uh, infamous um, Portland Gale of 1898. And, uh, Those steamships ships back in those days, guys, they were, they were actually, they were designed as, as like taxi cabs, buses. And, and for transportation, some guy didn't want to take a train all the way from Massachusetts to Portland, Maine. They got a board, they got a board of these steamers. It only cost one dollar back then. That just only one, only one dollar just for, um, just for passage overnight. It don't cover the bill of fare to eat and probably cigars and smoke and a little drink here and there. But uh, I imagine they give you a room to sleep in and everything else. But these things can carry up to 500 people. And the day of the sinking of the, of the uh, SS Portland was that she had a, a total of 180 people. And only 35 were found because they, they came up to the surface and washed ashore along with the miscellaneous parts of the wreckage. And uh, believe you me, the wreckage of this ship was strewn up to 40 miles. The wreckage of this ship was. And they knew the port was sunk because they found oars. They found side paddle, paddle wheels, uh, where the paddle wheels didn't name of the port on the paddle field box there. They found the port on there and they knew she was doomed, but they just couldn't find out. They didn't know where she sunk at. The United States Navy, they sent, uh, they, they, they're, they're out there trying to hunt for her and find out where she's at, but they didn't know. And uh, so Nova and Wood Toll got involved in uh, the discovery of the wreck of the Portland. Her location is kept secret, so 
I can see why. This is, this is the same thing that this is Mr. John, uh, Dr. John Ballard should have done on the Titanic. He should have made the location secret. That way you'll have no pillaging, no grave robbing, nobody going down there digging up artifacts out of there. Because it's, to me, it's, to me, if anybody that has feelings for for fellow hum, hum, humanity, is it's got to be respected because it's a grave. It's a grave site. You got people that died, that laid there and rotted until nothing left of them. And people go down there and start stealing stuff like that. That's like taking belt buckles and, and, and dog tags off dead sailors aboard the USS Arizona. Same difference. It's all about money, guys. That's all it is. And uh, the root of all evil. And uh, so that was very intelligent of them to uh, to make sure that her location was unknown. And um, because there's a lot of stuff down there that can be taken off that wreck. And they. There's pottery down there and all kinds of stuff out there down below. And you have a lot of people who are very interested in scavenging, scavenging, uh, salvage. Going down there trying to take stuff off of Portland. Well, like I say, guys, it's, uh, you gotta have a little, you gotta have a little, oh, yeah. You got to have a little respect. Like something stamped. That'll be good. Huh. Well, I wonder what that was. Oh, I see. It was one of those uh, laser parts. Those laser parts, they come off easy, guys. Yeah, that's what it was. This they got this laser cut stuff. These laser stuff cut, they come right out there just like nothing. So they gotta be careful handling this. Nothing got broke. Okay. This thing is big. I'm gonna have fun building this this year. That's not an agenda yet. Uh, like I say, that's gonna be a. Uh, a fall and winter build. And uh, I got too much fish to fry right now. I got Mr. Martin Lambert's uh, 124 scale um, Tiffy uh, Buddy Group build coming up. And matter of fact, that's going to be for all scales, guys. Like I said in the last video, it's great to have, go ahead and have different scales because a lot of people don't, don't have that kit can't afford it and don't know where to get it anymore because I don't think they make them anymore. And uh, so all, all scales are welcome. I mean, you can have uh, 124 scale, 148 scale, it doesn't matter. They have chewing gum, wood, paper, it don't matter. And uh, so, like I say, you guys got one of your stash pile? Join in. More than merrier. It's going to be a very, very joyous build. It's going to be a six month build. It starts on, 30, on the on uh, the I believe the 1st of July. No, wait a second. Yeah. It starts on the 1st of July all the way up to by January. It's only six months. So it's going to be a, a very, very joyous group build. And uh, like I say, any scales, you guys want to join in, we're all happy to have you aboard. You know, we got a good uh, a modeling community right here. And uh, we all enjoy each other. And uh, one big happy family, that's what I say. Okay, guys, this completes the special video for Friday. I just got off work about a, a couple hours ago. It's 12 o'clock at night now. And I'm going to do some more work on the uh, Isabella. And knock on shit's work, smoke a cigar, and, and uh, watch some YouTube presentations. Okay, guys, this concludes the introduction of the fall build on the steamship SS Portland and uh, 
and God bless the souls that lost their life on her and that very very cold bitter volatile air mass